I used to attend church every Sunday, but now I can't remember the last time I set foot in a church. Only humans can imagine the future. Naming and believing in an imaginary place can only increase the fear and dread of that idea. Live life and have a positive mindset towards death. The more you have, the more you can lose. The more you learn, the more alienated you become. Animals live in the moment and have no concept of the future. They don't get stressed or anxious about future events. Some people choose to praise God for their entire lives in case they might go to hell. But how can I condemn them if this is what makes them happy? I no longer use the Bible as a literal handbook for living, but still find some passages poetic and useful. These verses can be found in the book of Ecclesiastes. 1 4. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. That means we are only here for a short time, but the energy we are born of, whatever form it takes, will endure forever. This is comforting, as is the idea that we all return to the place we came from, and though We were born to toil and suffer with much knowledge. Also comes a sense of loss. The loss of innocence is one of the most critical themes in the Bible, and it is only through knowledge that we shed ignorance and dawn enlightenment. For someone like me, the pursuit of an enlightened existence far outweighs the fear and torment of imagining myself or my loved ones in eternal damnation. 1. 7. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Sounds like a very Buddhist way of thinking. We all return to the river, into a collective consciousness. The earth regenerates itself, reincarnation at some level, and the world seems to work seamlessly because of the well-designed life cycle. This includes water, trees, animals, and humans. 1. 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. This could evoke passivity and futility, but I find comfort in the fact that there is no pressure to be new or perfect or different. However life came about and began to sprout, it has been doing it for so long and will continue long after our individual lives blink out of existence. 1, 13 through 15. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. It is our life's job to search out wisdom, and it is the only way we learn. We gather useful items and ideas, and this is how things are meant to be. It doesn't seem to matter what is done, because the nature of things is set, and life can never be satisfying. Wanting cannot be numbered. And wanting is one area that Eastern religions and philosophies warn against. It is silly to want more than one person could realistically use, and there is no use working overly hard to attain. All things will someday pass away, even our rapidly firing minds. One seventeen through 18 
and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit, for in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. There may be pain in wisdom, but as another very good book put it, wit beyond measure is man's greatest treasure. It separates us from other life forms because we have music, art, religion, science. We have an urge to understand how things are put together and work. I have given my heart to both madness and folly. And though everything seems meaningless at times, I feel growth is necessary to life, even when that growth can be painful. Ignorance is always associated with bliss, but there is also satisfaction in the intricate details of life, science and literature, that I would be lost without having learned. Perhaps some of God's creatures are simply doomed to lives of unfulfilled longing. I long for knowledge and connection. Then again, most connections simply wither away, afraid to confront the major questions, afraid of offending another fellow sufferer. Three, one through two. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. This one is quoted constantly. I like to plant things, not just to reap the benefits, but because I enjoy the process of growth. Growth inevitably leads to death and more sadness and unsure feelings. But as this verse confesses, those things must happen in order for life to perpetuate onward. 10.2 A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. I love that last one because I'm left-handed and a bit of a fool at some times. Overall, I like the imagery of rebirth in this book, and the idea of triviality in existence. I will probably never stop seeking wisdom in one form or another. I still write about my religious experiences because they were a huge part of my life growing up. I have since changed my perception and made up my own mind about certain issues. If you are interested in creative writing that deals with my religious past, you should listen to Nothing New Under the Strange Sun, which is a small piece that I will be putting out there for you all very soon. Through reading my testimonials, you will discover why I went searching for more in my life and how I stopped seeking God's will and approval for every arbitrary situation. And I want to ask what your favorite quote was from the book of Ecclesiastes, not necessarily one I selected. And what do you think the quote or the overall book means? Are you a person of faith, a lifelong non-believer, or like me, do you fall somewhere in the middle?